Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. This is your first time to our channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video if you enjoy and to stay up to date on all the videos we post here at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, we're continuing our episodes and series on building your first app in Microsoft Teams. And the purpose of this one is going to show you how to create pop-up screens inside of your application. There are many use cases for this, but in this one, I'm gonna show how to, when a user tries to delete a record, make sure that they click another button before the actual deletion happens. So this is great to make sure that you don't delete something by accident. So kind of like a confirmation screen. So stay tuned to see how we get this done. Alright, so we are back in the app that we've been building throughout this series. Uh, if you have not built this app, feel free to go back to episode one and build this from beginning to end. Or if you're just curious about how do I make pop-up screens in Canvas apps, then just sit back and watch and see how we get this executed. So the first thing that we're going to do is get to that screen that has all of our check-in records. And we set this up on our last video here. So I'm going to alt-click the see current location of students. And here we are, we are now seeing all of our check-in records. And the goal is we want to simply take a record and be able to delete it. Cause maybe we made the check-in and then realize we made it for the wrong person or they're not gonna stay at our, uh, in our room for the check-in, whatever the case might be. So basic deletion is super simple. All we need to do is put in some type of an icon or a button to click on in order to activate deletion. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to my insert ribbon. I'm gonna go with the very popular trash can here. And then I'm just going to drag and drop this into my template cell of my gallery because I want every record in the gallery to have this icon. Now I'm going to bring this over. We're not going to make this picture perfect design wise in order to save some time in the video. But now that I have this nice icon here, what I want to do is to be able to delete the record that I select. So basic deletion, very simple. So on the on select property of this icon, I'm simply going to come in here and type in the formula that I would like to remove from my student check-in and outs table, this item. And just like that, deletion has now been set up. So if I hold down the Alt key to do a quick preview here, if I wanna get rid of this for Terry on April 20th, I click it. And as the ants go marching at the top here, for Terry's check-in has now just been removed. Now, this is a, a little bit scary for some users because it's super easy to click the button and the record is gone forever. So one thing we can do is set up a pop-up screen to show. So here's the idea. When the user clicks this icon, we're gonna show them a screen right on this screen that says, hey, are you sure you want to delete the record? If they click no, the pop-up screen will disappear and the record's gonna remain intact. If they hit yes, the deletion of the record is going to execute and the pop-up screen will disappear as well. And in order to set these up, we are gonna use contextual variables. These are variables that are only limited to this screen and they get updated based on certain actions from within the application screen. So the variable is going to control whether or not the screen shows or the screen is hidden from our users. So let's see how we get this done. So the first thing I'm gonna do before getting into the contextual variables is set up the components of the pop-up screen. So I'm gonna come up here to the insert ribbon and what I like to use for my pop-up screens are containers. So I'm gonna choose this container right here. And you're gonna see the reason why I like to use containers rather than a grouping of all of my controls. So I've got this container here and for the time being, I'm just gonna kinda of take it and make it take up really kind of all of this space here. Now notice when I put my container, I was in my template cell, which is why the container is showing inside of the gallery, which is really what I don't want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this container in the gallery and I want to put the container on the entire screen itself. So I'm going to come back up to the insert ribbon and choose a container. Now that I have this container, I'm going to bring it right about here and have it take up pretty much the rest of the majority of this screen because we'll get this gallery looking a little bit better throughout our series. Now this is simply just called container two, which I want to give it a different name. So I'm going to double click and call this CNT delete screen. So now that I have this container, the first thing is I want to make it look like its own separate area. So I'm gonna come up to the fill color of the container. And right now it's just set to clear, but I'm gonna change the transparency to maybe like a 0.4. 
uh, maybe point three is a little bit better. So that way they can still see where they were at prior, but it's not just completely clear all the way throughout. So now that I've set that part up, the next thing that I want to do is start to put in a nice little label inside, as well as two buttons to activate or cancel the deletion of the record. So the first thing I'm gonna come up here and do is I'm gonna insert, and I'm gonna to choose to insert a label inside of this container. And then I'm gonna bring this on over here. Again, for the next video, I'll get this looking really, really nice, but for right now, we wanna see how to get this to work. So for the text, I'm just gonna do something. Are you sure you want to delete the record? And then I can even put a little bit of context here. I can say four, and then what I can do is I can come on over and reference the record that they had just selected. So the record that they select from this delete button is coming from this gallery one, which has a pretty awful name. So what I'm gonna do first is just start it off with gallery one dot selected dot student, and that is a lookup record. So then I'm gonna have to say, what do I want from the lookup record? I want their first name. And then I'm gonna do it one more time, and I'm gonna put in a space so I can get their first and their last name. So gallery one dot selected dot last name, dot student dot last name. And so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna format this text so it's a little bit easier to read. And so this is what I currently have for my label. Are you sure you want to delete the record for? And then once I actually make a selection here, we'll actually see these over. Now again, gallery one, pretty bad name here. So I'm gonna rename this to gal check-ins. And notice when I make that change, if I come back into my label inside of this container, it updates that here accordingly as well for me. So now that I have that done, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'll do like a 24 font here, and then I'll probably change the color to, let's say, let's see if a white's looking pretty good. Ah, it's looking, looking decent for now. Again, we'll get it looking picture perfect as we move throughout. So now that I have that, I probably wanna put a nice little question mark in here at the end as well. So let me just close this out with a question mark. All right, so this is label three. Gonna give it another label. I'm gonna call it label, confirm, delete. Okay, so now that we have that set, the next piece is to put in here my two buttons, one yes to delete and one no, nope, I wanna cancel the deletion. So up here at the top, I've got my container selected. I'm gonna make my formula window smaller here and I'm gonna come on over and insert a button. And then I'm just gonna bring this button on over make it a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna change the text. And I'm gonna be very, very explicit here. Yes, delete. All right, so I've got that changed. And then maybe I'll change the color of my button. I'll go with a green here. So yes, delete, and then probably bump up the text size as well to a nice 16, and maybe font weight, I'll make it semi-bold. All right, so I have my yes delete button, simply called button three. Gonna definitely give this a different name. I'm gonna call it BTN delete. Now that I have that done, I'm just simply gonna take this button, control C, control V, just do a nice copy and paste here, and then just modify it. So I'm gonna do something like uh, keep record. And then I'll change maybe the color to uh, this nice red. And then I'm gonna rename this button to BTN Keep Record. So now I've set all these components up on the screen. Now I wanna be able to control the visibility of the screen. It should not always be showing, it should only show when they click the delete trash can over here. So in order to do that, we're going to use a contextual variable. And contextual variables, those values can be updated within the screen that you declared on. So we're gonna come up here to our screen. And the first thing is we need to declare this variable whenever a user gets to this screen. So there's a property on every screen called the onVisible, basically saying when the screen becomes visible, what do you want to occur? What we want to occur is we want to declare a variable. And the way we do this for contextual variables is using the formula update context. So we say update context, and we basically declare this record variable here. And the way we do that is with a curly brace. Then we give it a name, and I'm gonna call this something like var show confirmation. 
then I put in a colon and then I give it a value. So this variable is going to control whether or not the screen should uh, show up on the screen. So if we think about it, when the user gets to the screen, we don't want the pop-up to show. So by default, this variable should be set to false because the visibility is going to reference true or false. And if the visibility is false, the screen will not show. So that's the reason why we want to set this to false to begin with. So now that we know that, let's just simply type in here false. And then we're going to close out that variable and then close out the update context. So now that we have that, watch how this is going to work. If I come on over here to container delete screen, there's a property called the visible property. And this is on all of your controls. And right now it's currently set to true. But what we're going to do is say, nope, it's not going to be hard coded. Do whatever the variable has been set to. So I'm going to choose var show confirmation. And right away when we do that, the screen has now disappeared, which is exactly what we wanted. So now the next thought process is, how do we get them to see that, that pop-up screen? Well, it should happen when they click on their delete trash can icon. Now it's a little bit hard for me to select because I have the container as the top layer. And this is why it's always great to know about your tree view. And so I'm gonna come over here to my gallery with the icon. I'm even gonna give it another name. I'm gonna go icon start delete. So on here, I want to get rid of this remove because I don't want it to remove anymore. All I need this to do is to update the context of our variable from false. Now set this to true so the screen shows. So I'm going to say update context, var show confirmation, and let's set that now to true. So now what should happen is if I hold down my alt key and I click on any of my icons, the variable should be set to true, which it is, and now we see our pop-up screen. So we're getting there. Now all we have to do is worry about our yes delete button and our keep record button. Let's do the keep record button first. That's the really easy one. All we need to say is, hey, if somebody clicks on keep record, which means they want to keep the record, not delete, the pop-up screen should now just disappear. Well, that means we need to update the variable. So we're gonna go to the on select property of this button and we're just simply going to say we want to take our variable, which right now would be set to true because we're seeing the screen. Well, we want to update the context and we want to set it to false. And then we close this out. And now what should happen is if I hit keep record, boom, it goes away, comes back, goes away. We are getting there. So now the last thing we need to do is the yes delete button. So the yes delete button needs to do actually two different things. One, so I'm gonna head over here to the on select. It needs to get rid of the pop-up screen and it needs to remove our record. So let's do the first part here. We're going to say that we want to remove our record. So where's this coming from? Well, it's our student check-in and check-outs. Then we have to say what record do we want to remove? Now this time we can't use this item because this button is not inside of a gallery. So we have to tell Power Apps where was the record that we were trying to remove. Well, it came from our gallery that I renamed to Gal Check-ins. So we're gonna say, hey, go look at Gal Check-ins dot, look at the selected record. And then we're gonna close that off. So that should remove the selected record, but then we're not done because now after it removes the record, we also want the pop-up screen to disappear. So then once that is done, we're gonna say, let's update the context again. We want to update our var show confirmation variable and we want to set it back to false. And then we're going to close this off. So now let's play it from the beginning here. So I'm going to say, nope, I do want to keep the record. Beautiful. I'll hit delete. Yes, I do want to delete this for Jack Peterson, 8.47 a.m. So I'll hit yes, delete. And that one was removed. It might be a little bit hard, so let's pick uh, let's pick for Terry here at 8:42. So I'm going to hit delete. Do you want to delete for for Terry? Yes, I do. And he is now removed. That check-in is removed. So this is one use case of using pop-up screens when you want to show something on the screen, but you only want to show it during a certain click of an action. So pop-up deletion, pretty easy to set up. Uh, and if that's all you're concerned about, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, but let me show a few little other modifications I wanna make here in terms of design of this gallery that we set up in one of our earlier videos. 
So one of the new things I've been learning is galleries are great, but we can kind of stylize them just a little bit more uh, by using containers inside. I've been putting this in a lot of the apps that I've been creating here uh, over the last month over right here at Pragmatic Works with some of my own personal apps, ones I've done for hackathons and virtual mentoring for my customers. So let me show you this little design thing and see if you like it here. So what I want to do is I want to first, I'm going to take this this gallery. I'm just going to move this over for the time being. And I'm going to make a place, a staging area to put this gallery inside of. So I'm going to come up here to the insert ribbon and I'm going to put in a container. All right. And I'm going to give this container a name. I'm going to call it CNT Gal Check ins. And then I'm going to take this container and I'm going to have it take up the majority of my screen here, just like so. All right, so now I've got this container inside. Now that I have the container, what I'm going to do is come on over to my gal check-ins and I'm going to take this and actually before I do all of that, let me make sure I save this just in case if you probably know that within teams every once in a while, it'll time out on you. So it's always a good idea to save and I'm going to take my gal check-ins and I'm going to cut this gallery out. Now that I've cut it out, I'm going to put it inside of my container. So once I come on in, I'm going to three click the gal container gal check-ins and I'm going to paste this to go inside of it. You might be saying, well, why are you, are you doing this? Well, I'm going to bring this to take up the entire size of the container. Now this is a problem because I'm kind of, I'm hard coding the gallery width and height. And if I ever make a modification to the container, I want the gallery to also responsibly change its size as well. So one way I can do that is I can come first, I'll go to the height of the gallery. And instead of it being hard coded at 568, because maybe I make my container larger or smaller, I'm just going to say always use the height of the container. So I could reference the container control and say dot height, or much quicker is I can say parent dot height. And what parent means is because the, con the gallery is inside of the container, the container is the parent and the gallery is the child. So we're saying whatever the container is, always use its height. And then I'm just going to keep doing that for everything else that I want to respond accordingly. So I'm going to go to the width as well. And instead of a 1055, I'm going to say use the parent dot width. So now you see it takes up the entire width of the container. And then I'm also going to do that for its X position and for its Y position. So I'm going to say parent dot X. All right. And then I'm also going to come on over here and actually, you know what parent dot X, I don't want to use, you know, this is a good idea. Actually, I don't want to use the X value of the container. I do want it to always be left justified. So I'm going to use a zero. So now that I, I have that in place and again, I, I'm going to come over, let's move the delete icon a little bit further to the right. You might say, okay, what was the whole point of doing that container? Well, now again, if I move this container, we see that the gallery moves as well. And I can make it a little bit more space here. So we want to show something with containers that you don't have with galleries are called drop shadows. So over here, notice how it's just completely rectangular, but I can put in a nice drop shadow here. Uh, and I'm going to go, going to make it really, really obvious here. I'm going to go extra bold for the drop shadow. And as you see, we now have a shadow. If I play the application, we now have the shadow um, along the outsides of the container itself. So that's looking pretty good. But another thing we can do with containers is we can put in a border and we can change the border radius. So let's say I set the border to like a nice three here. So now we see this border around the container and now I can bump up that border radius and make it a little bit more softer, like a 30. So now when we play the application, now we see, uh, and I'm just zoomed out a little bit here. Let me, uh, zoom out so it's a little bit easier to see. Now we have our gallery in a nice, uh, I don't know, I just kind of like the feeling of that. Maybe change the color of the border, but it's just a little design idea to think about uh, as you move forward. If you don't like galleries just being completely rectangular, put them inside of a container. You can put that nice little drop shadow effect in here. My drop shadow would be a little bit better if I wasn't on a completely gray background, but hopefully you get the idea. And again, hopefully you have enjoyed this video and you've been building this app with me in Teams. There's a lot more videos to come in this series. So again, if you liked, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, stay so up to date on all of the content that we provide. And if you're liking it, I will see you in the next one.